What's up, Jivin here, bringing you another video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to get used to keyboard and mouse or controller fast if you're switching inputs. I get asked this all the time on stream, so I'm just gonna to try to give you some advice to get you on the right track. Before we hop into this video, I just wanna say thank you to all my supporters who are using code JIVINTV in the item shop. It's like the best way to support me directly. If you guys wanna help me out and see more uploads, it helps me a lot when you guys use code JIVINTV. On that note, let's hop into the video. So the general advice that I give people when they're trying to switch inputs is don't rush into it. What I mean by this is start with the basics. Don't hop straight to the super advanced stuff or you're gonna get discouraged. When you're starting a new input, it's like starting from square one mechanically. What I mean by this is you're not gonna know how to edit, build, or aim on the new input. Unless you're switching to controller, of course, because then you're gonna have aimbot. Teehee. So what do I recommend you do? I recommend that you start with the simple stuff like 90s and then like simple edits like wall edits, just practice editing a wall and then work your way up to double edits, triple edits and then to the more advanced stuff like hardcore piece control. It's gonna be hard to be fluent with the super advanced stuff in the game like, you know, running an edit course if you don't have the basics down and if you try to rush into it, you're just gonna be a sloppy mess when you go into arena and you're fighting a good player. So you may already know this, but I have a beginner building guide on my YouTube, Jiven TV. Running through that might actually help you out a lot because it kind of starts from square one with like just ramp pushing and like, you know, ramp pushing with the wall, ramp, floor, all the way to advanced retakes. So running through that from the very beginning to the end will help you out a lot. But also I'll give you some more tips in this video. If you're just starting out on a new input, one of the most important things is to get really good keybinds. This is super important to start out on the right keybinds because if you don't, you're gonna be wasting your time learning keybinds that are not ideal for Fortnite competitive. And then eventually you're gonna need to switch your keybinds and you're gonna have to start out from square one all over again. So first things first, look up some good keybinds. I have a settings video on my main YouTube. Just search Jiven TV settings and you'll find it. And in that video, I explained why my settings are super ideal. But if you're switching to controller, you might wanna look up some ideal controller keybinds because it is really important that you don't use the standard controller keybinds either. You need to make sure that your jump button is easily accessible. Like you don't even need to move your hand to jump. Same with editing. I think a lot of people use like left stick or right stick to jump and edit. So that might help you out a lot. The biggest things that people struggle with on keyboard and mouse when they're first switching is typically aiming and movement. So I recommend running aim courses every single day, whether it be Kovacs, aim labs, or in-game aim trainers like Scovacs and aim duels. You're gonna need to run those every day for a really long time to keep your aim up to speed and just to train your reflexes because keyboard and mouse aiming is a lot more tedious than controller aiming. You need to do every single micro adjustment yourself and you don't have aim assist to help you out with that. By the way, don't hate, I do think aim assist is necessary for controller. I'm just saying like keyboard and mouse, you definitely need to train it more. And then when it comes to movement, honestly, mastering retakes and, and learning all the necessary build moves are what is gonna help you with movement. Because once you get to advanced retakes, that requires really precise movement. And so practicing those can definitely help bring your movement to the next level. Then when it comes to controller, the most difficult things are probably building and editing. A lot of people, including myself, have a lot of trouble doing retakes on controller. So you're gonna need to spend a lot more time in edit courses and practicing advanced build moves. But like I said, you're probably gonna wanna start with the basics like 90s, ramp pushing, and then work your way up to Thwaifo cones, infinite 90s, double edits, triple edits, editing down, all that jazz. And like I said before, I have a whole entire build guide on my main YouTube that'll help you out and take you step by step how to master this. Another thing to note is that you're probably gonna struggle in Arena for the first couple weeks of being on this new input, maybe even longer than that, because it takes different people different amount of times to master these. When I switched to keyboard and mouse, which was season X of Fortnite, it probably took me three weeks to a month of sitting in creative nonstop to be at a semi-pro level. And you know, it's gonna be different for everybody. When I first got on keyboard and mouse, I was pretty fast at editing and stuff, but nothing felt really natural. The goal of switching to a new input is to really master it and to have it feel natural doing everything like editing and building. 
You want it to feel like you're walking when you're editing and building, like it's so natural that it just feels like walking. So basically the whole point of this is that if you're dying a lot in arena and you're choking a lot of edits, that's normal for like the first month or two. Like don't even worry about it. Just keep grinding and focus most of your energy on practicing in creative because that's where you can get the most mechanical practice fast. Another thing that can help you out a lot is just watching pro players play on the input that you're switching to. So if you're switching to controller, watch some controller players play, like live on stream, like Styx or Hufishi or Hunt, one of those people, you know? And then if you're switching to keyboard and mouse, just watch a keyboard and mouse player and try to focus in on the way they move, the way they build, the certain moves that they do, because the different inputs, you know, they require different play styles. So watching pro players play can definitely help push you to that next level. And then it's important to note that anything you're struggling to do, you just search on YouTube, search up a tutorial. So if you're struggling with movement, search, how do I improve movement in Fortnite? Or if you're struggling with peace control on this new input, search, how do I practice peace control? Stuff like that, you know? Just take it one step at a time because there's so many skills in Fortnite, you're gonna have to learn most of those mechanical skills over again. The good news is, when you're switching to an input, you don't lose any of your game sense, and that's like one of the things that takes the longest to learn, such as rotations, when to fight, stuff like that. And if you are struggling with those things, like I said for the other stuff, all you gotta do is look up YouTube tutorials for the specific things you're struggling with. So if you're struggling to rotate in mid-game, how to rotate in mid-game, in arena, or in tournaments if you're curious about tournaments. All the answers are on YouTube and just, yeah, take it one step at a time and you'll get there in no time. Last part of this video, I just wanna give you advice on my personal favorite equipment when it comes to keyboard and mouse and controller. When it comes to controller, I recommend getting a controller with paddles, such as a scuff controller or an elite. I personally have a scuff infinity 4PS, which is a PlayStation version, two paddles. It's really clean. It kind of breaks easily, but at the same time, it's built really nice and I've never played on anything that feels so good. And then when it comes to keyboard and mouse, my favorite keyboard is the SteelSeries Apex Pro TKL, but it's like $200, so if you can't afford that, maybe try looking into a Ducky 1-2 Mini or any Logitech or HyperX keyboard will do good. You can go to stores and test out the different switches. Switches are kind of the way the key feels when it pushes in. I personally like the ones in the Steel Series Apex Pro, that's why I like the keyboard so much. They're called Omni Point switches, but they only come in the Apex Pro. Other than that, I really like red switches. I don't like the red silence as much, I like the reds. They're a little louder, but they feel better than the silence for some reason. And then when it comes to mouse, I really like the Glorious Model O. I personally use a Final Mouse, which is just like the Model O, but it's a little bit sturdier. The only thing is, Final Mouse have been out of stock for so long, so you won't be able to get one. They're never releasing them again, so you would have to pay like $300 on eBay when they're really only worth $80. So I recommend getting a Model O. It's basically the same thing, just a little bit cheaper. You can get it for around $50, and they just came out with some new ones as well that might even be better than the ones that I have. So anyways, that's my general advice for switching to keyboard or mouse or controller. I hope this video helped you out. Just a reminder, use code JIVENTV in the item shop. Please, please, please like and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next video. A peace.